Hello everyone and thank you for stopping by my channel, Dale Chanel's 48th World, where we do Let's Read the Bible. Let's study the Bible together. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm putting out on it as far as positivity and learning about the Bible and reading daily Bible scriptures, okay, with one another. We're going to go right back to Genesis. We're going to pick up at um, Genesis chapter 25 and we're going to go from chapter 1 of that book to uh, 34, okay? So that's chapter 25. Verse 1 through 34. Let's get right on into it. We have the death of Abraham. Abraham took another wife whose name was Hetera. She bore him Zimran, Jachshan, Midon, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Okay, and it just goes on to tell about the heritage and all of that from verse 1 through um, four. Picking up at five, verse five, Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. If anybody don't know what concubines is, um, meaning he, he had other wives in, other, in another sense. He didn't just have one wife, you know, he had uh, married uh, other women, you know, to satisfy his needs. He was a king at the time, so pretty much he could do what he wanted to do. He could afford them. Okay. <sighs> Verse 7. Altogether, Abraham lived a hundred and seventy-five years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age. And the old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His son Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Memory, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar, the Hittite. The field Abraham had brought from the Hittites, there Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah, meaning his first wife. After Abraham died, God blessed his son Isaac, who then lived near Beer, Lake. Lehiah, Le a Lehi, Roy, Ishmael's sons. This is the account of Abraham's son Ishmael, whom Sarah, maidservant Hagar, the Egyptian, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael listed in the order of their birth. Uh, I'm not really going to go into all those names. Too many, too difficult to even try to. Um, name all of them so for your own edification go and read those names of his children uh left behind abraham we go to um verse 17 in chapter 25 altogether ishmael lived 137 years he breathed his last and died and he was gathered to his people his descendants settled in the area from havla to shur near the border of egypt as you go towards a shore, and they lived in the hostility towards all their brothers. Okay, we get to Jacob and Usa, uh, Esau. Okay, there is the account of Abraham's son Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethel, the Aramean. Aramine from Paddan, Aram, or Aram, and sister of Le Laban, the Armenian, Aramanian. Okay. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebecca, became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, meaning they were wrestling with one another. Uh, inside the womb, struggling is another word, uh, but we would just pretty much say they were wrestling in the womb, um, I guess trying to figure out who's going to come out first, all right, um, where are we, 
okay, and jostled each other within her. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two people from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Isu. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Isu's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 69 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Isu became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was a quiet man staying among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Isu, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Isu came in front, or he came in from the open country, famished. Famished is another word for hunger. He was very hungry and probably dehydrated as well. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that. Ooh, excuse me. That red stew. I am famished. That is why he was also called Eden. Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. Ain't that a price to pay to give your only brother a meal? You know what I'm saying? And you sitting up there bargaining. And that was a big bargain to pay out. Uh, look, I am about to die, Isu said. What good is it? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some Lenten stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. So Esau really didn't understand his birthright, but he understood it after uh, Jacob got all the blessings from his father upon his father's passing. With no good of you know, the mother of both children um, playing a role or a negative part in it, but it just played out the way it was supposed to play out, okay? So, he's going to learn about his birthright because, you know, he didn't probably know he was a man of many hunter games and, you know, just wanting to hunt uh, animals and, you know, bring back you know, the animals for them to partake of and continue to live and this, that, and third, you know, never hungry. But he was just an outdoorsy type person. Isu is what I'm talking about. And Jacob was more of a thinker, a man with a pen and a piece of paper in his hand trying to scope out his life and how he wanted things to go in his life. So one was an action door and the other one, uh, was a pen, pencil pusher and a, um, a thinking of the mind type of man. Uh, and just the edification for birthright. In ancient times, the birthright included the inheritance rights of the firstborn. <laughs> Jacob was a schemer. He was seeking by any means necessary to gain advantage over others. But it was by God's appointment and care, not Jacob's wits that he came into this blessing. So, see, the Lord already had a hand on it. He knew how it was going to happen, but it was all for Esau's good, in a sense, towards the end. But it just is what it is, okay? And that was chapter 25, verses 1 through 34. You can reread it and get more edification out of it, but that was just my spiel and my take on it. Okay, peace and blessings to you all, and we'll be back tomorrow with... Genesis chapter 26 and see what Esau and Jacob are still getting themselves into and how um, the mother is going to play a very skillful part 
in giving up the inheritance that was really supposed to be left for Esau, since he was the firstborn. But, you know, Jacob inherited all its uh, inheritance from his father. Okay? But y'all be blessed, and I'll talk to you soon for more reading the Bible and asking for discernment so we will understand it for our own edification. All right. Good night, guys. Bye.